Welcome to another episode of The Death of Art. We're here in sunny Brooklyn at Cha Cha Ma Gallery to see tabletop art. I'm not too sure what we're gonna find inside, but let's take a look. This show is an Art Students League group show produced in the Art Students League, members, people enrolled in classes. Many of these paintings are not recent. Some of them go back to the 90s, but I guess it's their favorite work and they're doing a show here. The thing about tabletop art is it's a fairly recent phenomena as it being a thing. About four or 500 years ago, it became popular in Northern Europe and was done for its own purposes. It really goes back to the days of Pompeii and before, but it was usually part of a larger whole or part of a decoration or part of a funerary scene. So now we have this development where really objective art like this has really fallen out of the art world. You just don't see it. It appears sometimes in galleries, but th those are not the rock stars of the art world. So we're seeing a little bit of a throwback at this point. Tabletop art works best when it actually reaches out beyond its own medium. So let's take a look at this one over here. You got the kid eating chicken wings with the black label and the Pepsi next to him. And it's got this sort of primitivistic style, which is cool. So this is nice because it kind of makes fun of the medium. A lot of these are just classical tabletop art and it just does nothing for us because you can see this churned out for the last two centuries on one level or another. Um, an example of this is this. This is like a practice session. I don't really see this as relevant anymore. It's cute with the butterfly and so forth, but somebody's just finishing their technique. You know, you have to ask yourself, why is it hanging in a gallery? Why am I interested in it? And um, I'm found wanting for an answer. This next one is um, actually well done. It uh, is another, again, exercise in somebody developing their painterly technique. There's a lot of little invention, they're sticking bugs and sort of these anthropomorphic images in it. It's kind of cool, but again, I'm just not seeing a larger message. It's again, an exercise. So we're basically looking at exercises. Some of this is not tabletop art at all. If you go over there, you'll see a complete abstraction. I'm looking for a table or a tabletop. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to still lives in history. Everybody did them. Van Gogh did them, Cezanne did them. Uh, Cubism was actually developed to a certain degree by Cezanne on the tabletop. Um, and, uh, well, then you have this. If you step back, the level of luminosity and light that comes off of these two or three paintings that Yuri Tashiti has in here is really nice. I mean, again, it doesn't actually go beyond the level of an exercise but it's well done and it's a unique style, so it's something to see. I cannot remember any tabletop art involving a TV dinner. It's always these, uh, you know, nice glasses, teapots, bowls of fruit, flowers, but a TV dinner is kind of novel. Uh, the technique is wanting, but... This is an example of tabletop art becoming something bigger than tabletop art. This artist did a typical tabletop thing with a plate, some pretty food, a pretty tablecloth, but did in a very graphic style and made sort of like almost uh, an emblem. You can see this, imagine this in porcelain. It's now something else. You're not just looking at a tabletop art, but the subject is the same. Same with that one over there. It's a very simple approach, but just by flattening it and using an unusual watercolor technique, this artist turned it into something else, which I think is beautiful. Generally speaking, tabletop art is a pretty uninspiring medium. We came here, we saw some interesting examples a little outside of the medium, but I'm done talking about this. This thing, it makes me hungry. Let's go. Please like, please subscribe, and please ring the bell.